What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I'm going to show you five ways in which system design interviews are different than real world system design. And this is really, really important because just like coding interviews, system design interviews are a different skill from actually designing systems as your job. And so it's really important for us to understand those differences if we want to be as effective as possible in our actual interviews. And if you want tons more videos just like this, go ahead and hit that like and the subscribe button. We're releasing new videos every week. All right, so let's get into the five ways in which system design in the real world is completely different than system design interviews. And number one is the actual purpose of what it is that we're trying to do. In real world system design, our goal is to design an effective system to solve whatever problem it is, right? Our goal is to use the tools that we have available to us, to use the, all the resources that we have available to us, use the time that we have available to us, and ultimately create the best possible product for the end user. If we're building a chat app, that app needs to be robust. It needs to support all the users. It needs to support all the functionality that users might want. Whereas in a system design interview, our goal is not to design the most effective system, it's to demonstrate our expertise as much as possible. And it's specifically to demonstrate our expertise in 45 minutes, right? And so that's going to very dramatically shift what it is that we can accomplish in that time and how we're going to approach it. We want to focus on how can we cover a good breadth of different information, right? How can we show them that we have a breadth across different areas of the system? that we can design databases, that we can design the architecture, that we can design APIs, but then also show that we have depth in at least one area. This is where it's very important to be that T-shaped person where you have breadth of knowledge across a lot of things, but then you can go deep in one or a couple different areas. And so that's very different than designing an actual system. We're not going to be able to design everything in the time that we have allotted, and so we need to focus on how do I demonstrate both that breadth of knowledge and depth in at least one area. Reason number two why this is different, and I alluded to this already, is that in real world system design, you might have months or even years to develop the system that you are trying to build. It's really important that it be robust, that it be able to do all the things that you want it to do, but you have the time to do that, whereas in your interview, you only have 45 minutes. Maybe you have an hour, and so you're going to do something very different when you're designing a system in the real world than in your interview. In the real world, if we think about what that process might look like, it's going to start with some review of the existing literature. It's going to start with some customer research. It's going to start with looking at other systems that are out there. Then there's going to be a process of designing the high-level architecture, of reviewing, of meeting with other people, of going through this whole process that ultimately, over that period of time, results in this system being built out. But in your interview, you don't have that. And so in your interview, you're going to want to focus on, again, being that T-shaped person on quickly getting to the point, on quickly designing what is the best system that I can come up with in five minutes, in 10 minutes here, so that I have that overall architecture and then I can start digging into that, those specific pieces. We're trying to demonstrate that expertise in the 45 minutes that we have. We're not trying to build a robust system. Difference number three is that in real world system design, we're going to have deep customer research. We're gonna have time to dig into what have other people done before us. We can read research papers. We can do deep research across the board to understand how to build this system. Whereas in our system design interview, we don't have any of that, right? In our system design interview, we have 45 minutes to pull out of our head the best thing that we can come up with. And what does this mean for us in our system design interview? Well, it means a couple things. One is it means that we have to make a lot of assumptions. Right? There is no way around making assumptions in our system design interview. Yes, you can ask your interviewer, you know, do we need to implement this feature or that feature? You can ask them to give you some details, but really at the end of the day, you're not going to deeply understand the customer and what that customer exactly wants. And so it's important that rather than get hung up on understanding those exact details, you make the best assumptions that you can and then you move on. Right? If you're trying to determine which would be the best technology to use for a specific thing, which whether you want to use like a relational or a non-relational database, whether you want to use a REST API or a SOAP API, it's important you can't do the research, right? So you've got to just pick something and then use it. You've got to pick something and justify the reason why you've decided to use that technology with the information that you have in your head. So just like with coding interviews where we can't look up syntax and we can't look up these specific things, 
in our system design interviews, we're limited with what sort of research we can do, with what sort of information that we have. And so we need to be prepared to go in and do the best we can with what's already in our head. Difference number four is that in real world system design, completeness is essential, right? We can't build and release an app where every time someone goes to this page, they get a null pointer exception, right? We can't release an app where this fundamental feature does not work. But in our system design interview, that's completely different. We're not releasing this system to the public. It's not supposed to be a complete system. And if we focus on trying to get that completeness in one area, we're gonna to totally neglect every other part of the system. Remember, this comes back to demonstrating as much of our expertise as we can. If we go through a specific component of our system and spend 30 minutes trying to make sure that we cover every possible edge case, that's showing maybe depth in this one very specific area, but it's not actually helping us to demonstrate our expertise more broadly at designing a system, right? We wanna make sure that we are staying as broad as possible and that we are covering as much ground as we can. And so what I recommend in a system design interview is that you focus on like one core feature that you are going to implement or a couple core features. I call this concept the minimum viable system. What is the minimum viable system? What is the smallest system that you can create that would demonstrate that you understood the prompt, that you're implementing the thing that it is that they want you to implement, right? So if someone asks you to implement a chat application, there are a million different things that you could implement. There are a million different features that you could implement from you know, sending images to group chats, to uh, secure messaging, to disappearing messages. But how many of those are actually relevant to that core project of creating a chat app? Really, at the end of the day, we want to focus on building out those core features, which are sending and receiving messages. Maybe one other one if our interviewer specifically mentions it. And so this is a big difference between the real world and the interview, because in the interview, we need to focus on those core things. And finally, difference number five between real world system design and system design interviews is that in the real world, we have to integrate with a larger system. Right? In the real world, we're not going to be building something from scratch, most likely. Most likely, we're going to be building some component, some feature that we're going to implement into the existing system. And so a lot of the decisions are already being made for us. Right? When you're working on a system for your job, a lot of the frameworks have already been chosen. It's not like you're going to pick a brand new framework for this feature that you're building. Probably the database check technologies have been chosen for you any sort of message handling, all that technology is in place. There's lots of infrastructure that is already in place. Whereas in a system design interview, you're not tied down by that. And so in the system design interview, it's not so essential that you say, oh, well, I'm gonna use this type of database or I'm going to use that type of API. It's just about picking the thing that is going to be best locally for the thing that you are trying to build. Unless your interviewer specifies, like we're trying to integrate with this type of system, you don't need to worry about am I using the, like the right database? Because there is no right answer to a lot of these. And so you wanna focus on what is going to be the best local decision for you and the system that you are building. If you understand non-relational databases better than relational databases, you should focus on building out the system with a non-relational database and explaining why that's a good way to go. Rather than saying, oh, well, I know that like this is the best for this type of thing, focus on what is the thing that you can best explain. At the end of the day with system design interviews, it's about drawing on your existing knowledge. It's not about learning tons of brand new stuff. And so this is kind of a secret point six is that you want to focus on the things that you know. You want to focus on rather than trying to learn lots of new things because that's not really feasible for you to learn tons of new stuff at the depth that it's going to be needed. You want to focus on like really understanding the things that you do know and applying them to the best of your ability. And so with that, those are the five differences between system design in the real world and system design interviews. Just to reiterate here, the first one was that in the real world, you have to design an effective system versus in your interview, demonstrate your expertise. Number two, you, you are going from a multi-month or year cycle in which you can develop that system to only having 45 minutes. Number three, in the real world, you have deep customer research. You have access to a team of people. You have access to the internet. Whereas in your interview, you don't have any of that. Number four, in the real world, completeness is essential. 
Completeness is really, really important to build your system in a way that is going to be functional and valuable to the end user. Whereas in your interview, you just wanna focus on a couple of those key components. And finally, number five, in the real world, you have to integrate with the system as a whole. Whereas in your interview, you can make those best local decisions. And so with these, if you keep these in mind, they're gonna really help you to level up your system design interviewing. And so I hope you found this valuable. If you did, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps us grow the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.